Hey. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. 1 John chapter 2 verse 18. Today, we delve into one of the most enigmatic and compelling figures in biblical prophecy, the Antichrist. Who is this false messiah? And what does his appearance mean for our faith in the world at large? Understanding the Antichrist is not just about uncovering a mystery, but about deepening our faith and awareness in these pivotal times. Stay with us as we explore the signs, prophecies, and the profound impact this figure has on our lives and beliefs. Join us on this journey of discovery and enlightenment. The term Antichrist conjures images of ultimate evil, a figure who stands in direct opposition to Christ. But who or what is the Antichrist according to the Bible? Let's explore the origins and significance of this formidable character. The word Antichrist is derived from the Greek Antichristos, meaning opponent of the Messiah. The Antichrist is a figure mentioned in the Bible, known for being the ultimate enemy of Jesus Christ and a symbol of profound evil. He is often depicted as a charismatic and deceitful leader who will rise to power, perform miraculous signs, and mislead many people into believing that he is a Messiah or Savior. However, his true nature is entirely opposed to everything that Jesus stands for. The danger of the Antichrist lies in his ability to deceive and manipulate. He will use his charm and persuasive abilities to gain followers, creating a powerful and oppressive regime. Unlike Jesus, who preached love, humility, and truth, the Antichrist will promote lies, pride, and hatred. His actions will lead to widespread chaos, suffering, and moral decay. The Bible warns that the Antichrist will wage war against those who remain faithful to God. He will seek to change laws and times, oppress believers, and establish a false sense of peace and security that ultimately leads to destruction. His reign will be marked by intense persecution and a battle for the souls of humanity. Another key passage is found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 3 to 4, where Paul writes, Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Here, Paul describes a figure who will rise to deceive many, claiming divine status and seeking worship. The book of Revelation, rich with symbolic and apocalyptic imagery, adds another layer to our understanding. Revelation chapter 13 introduces the beast, often associated with the Antichrist. Then I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. It had seven heads and ten horns, with ten crowns on its horns. And written on each head were names that blasphemed God. Revelation chapter 13 verse 1. This beast, empowered by the dragon, Satan, wages war against the saints and deceives the inhabitants of the earth. Historically, many figures have been labeled as the Antichrist, from Roman emperors to contemporary leaders, reflecting the enduring relevance and ambiguity of this prophecy. The Antichrist symbolizes ultimate rebellion against God, embodying deceit, corruption, and the perversion of truth. Theologians have debated whether the Antichrist is a single person, a system of evil, or a symbol representing various figures and movements opposing Christ throughout history. What remains clear is that the Antichrist represents a significant threat to faith and truth, urging believers to remain vigilant and discerning. One of the most prominent traits of the Antichrist is deception. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 24, Jesus warns, For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. The Antichrist is a master of deceit using signs and wonders to mislead even the faithful. This deception extends to his ability to present himself as a benevolent and charismatic leader, earning the trust and admiration of many. In addition to being a deceiver, the Antichrist is also described as a blasphemer. Revelation chapter 13 verses 5 to 6 states, The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise its authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God, and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. 
The Antichrist will openly mock and defy God, promoting a narrative that directly opposes divine truth and righteousness. Another key characteristic is the Antichrist's pursuit of power and authority. Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 provides insight into this trait. He will speak against the Most High and oppress his holy people and try to change the set times and the laws. The holy people will be delivered into his hands for a time, times and half a time. This passage indicates that the Antichrist will seek to dominate and control, imposing his will through political and social upheaval. The Antichrist is also marked by a fierce opposition to the saints. Revelation chapter 13 verse 7 reveals, It was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. This relentless persecution of believers underscores the Antichrist's enmity toward those who uphold the teachings of Christ. A significant sign of the Antichrist's arrival is the establishment of a global rule. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 9 to 10, Paul explains, the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie, and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. The Antichrist's influence will be far-reaching, affecting nations and peoples across the globe. Furthermore, the Antichrist is associated with the number 666, often referred to as the mark of the beast. Revelation chapter 13 verse 18 cryptically states, this calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That number is 666. This number symbolizes imperfection and human frailty highlighting the fundamentally flawed nature of the Antichrist's reign. According to the book of Revelation, the emergence of the Antichrist is a key event that triggers the final tribulations. Revelation chapter 13 verses 7 to 8 states, It was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, the Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. This passage indicates that the Antichrist will dominate globally, exerting unparalleled influence and demanding allegiance from all peoples. In tandem with his rise, the Antichrist will establish a new world order characterized by immense suffering and chaos. Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 speaks of a covenant that the Antichrist will make and then break, leading to widespread devastation. He will confirm a covenant with many for one, seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. This act of betrayal and desecration is a defining moment, illustrating the Antichrist's intent to usurp divine worship and instigate profound turmoil. Moreover, the Antichrist's rule is marked by intense persecution of those who refuse to submit to his authority. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 21, Jesus warns, For then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. This period, often referred to as the Great Tribulation, signifies unprecedented suffering and trials for humanity, particularly for those who uphold their faith in God. The Antichrist's role also includes the performance of deceptive miracles and signs aimed at misleading the masses. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 9 to 10 describes his actions. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie, and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. These supernatural feats are designed to bolster his false claims of divinity and consolidate his control. In addition to these deceptions, the Antichrist is depicted as a figure who seeks to change the established order, challenging divine laws and traditions. Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 reveals, He will speak against the Most High and oppress his holy people and try to change the set times and the laws. The holy people will be delivered into his hands for a time, times and half a time. This signifies an assault on the core tenets of faith and morality reflecting the Antichrist's overarching ambition to supplant God's authority. Despite the Antichrist's temporary dominance, his rule is ultimately doomed to failure. Revelation chapter 19 verse 20 foretells his downfall. But the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet who had performed the signs on its behalf. 
With these signs, he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This prophetic vision underscores the transient nature of the Antichrist's power and the inevitable triumph of divine justice. The true Messiah, Jesus Christ, is depicted as the embodiment of divine love, sacrifice, and salvation. From his humble birth in Bethlehem to his selfless death on the cross, Jesus' life is a testament to God's redemptive plan for humanity. In contrast, the Antichrist represents the ultimate rebellion against God, characterized by deceit, arrogance, and destruction. The nature of Jesus' mission is encapsulated in John chapter 3, verse 16, which states, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Jesus came to offer salvation and restore the broken relationship between God and humanity. He performed miracles out of compassion, healed the sick, and taught about the kingdom of God, emphasizing love, forgiveness, and humility. Conversely, the Antichrist's mission is one of deception and domination. According to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 9 to 10, the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. Unlike Jesus, who used miracles to reveal God's love and power, the Antichrist will use deceptive wonders to mislead and control people, promoting a false narrative that ultimately leads them away from the truth. Jesus' life and ministry were marked by humility and service. Philippians chapter 2 verses 6 to 8 describes this beautifully. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross is the ultimate act of love and humility, providing a way for humanity to be reconciled with God. In stark contrast, the Antichrist is depicted as a figure of immense pride and blasphemy. Revelation chapter 13 verses 5 to 6 states, The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise its authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place in those who live in heaven. The Antichrist's blasphemy and arrogance serve to exalt himself above all that is divine, positioning himself as a false deity deserving of worship. The character of Jesus is also defined by truth. In John chapter 14 verse 6, Jesus declares, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus' teachings are grounded in the absolute truth of God's word, guiding believers on a path of righteousness and eternal life. He embodies the ultimate revelation of God's nature and will for humanity. In contrast, the Antichrist is a master of lies and deceit. John chapter 8 verse 44 highlights this nature, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. As an agent of Satan, the Antichrist will spread falsehoods and manipulate the truth to achieve his sinister goals, leading many astray. Jesus' kingdom is spiritual, transcending earthly power and authority. When questioned by Pilate, Jesus clarified in John chapter 18 verse 36, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. Jesus' reign is characterized by peace, justice, and eternal life offered to all who believe in him. The Antichrist, on the other hand, seeks to establish a temporal and tyrannical kingdom. Daniel chapter 7 verses 23 to 25 prophecies about this. He gave me this explanation. The fourth beast is a fourth kingdom that will appear on earth. It will be different from all the other kingdoms and will devour the whole earth, trampling it down and crushing it. The ten horns are ten kings who will come from this kingdom. After them another king will arise, different from the earlier ones. He will subdue three kings. 
He will speak against the Most High and oppress his holy people and try to change the set times and the laws. The holy people will be delivered into his hands for a time, times and half a time. The Antichrist's rule will be marked by oppression, war, and the persecution of the faithful. The ultimate contrast lies in their destinies and the outcome of their respective reigns. Jesus' resurrection from the dead is the cornerstone of Christian faith, symbolizing victory over sin and death. As Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 55 to 57, Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus' triumph ensures eternal life for his followers and the eventual establishment of a new heaven and earth where righteousness dwells. The Antichrist, despite his temporary power and influence, is destined for ultimate defeat. Revelation chapter 19 verse 20 vividly describes his downfall. But the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet who had performed the signs on its behalf. With these signs, he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This final judgment underscores the transitory nature of evil and the certainty of divine justice. The Antichrist and the true Messiah thus represent two diametrically opposed paths, one leading to deception, destruction, and eternal damnation, and the other to truth, salvation, and eternal life. The stark differences between them highlight the importance of discernment, faith, and adherence to the teachings of Christ in navigating the complexities of the end times. One of the most notable influences of the Antichrist in popular culture can be seen in literature. Classic and contemporary works often explore the themes of deception, power, and the struggle between divine and malevolent forces. In John Milton's Paradise Lost, though the focus is primarily on Satan's rebellion and fall, the portrayal of evil and its impact on humanity echoes the narrative of the Antichrist. Milton's depiction of Satan as a charismatic yet profoundly corrupt being can be seen as a precursor to the modern interpretations of the Antichrist in literature. Another significant example is the character of Randall Flagg in Stephen King's The Stand. Flagg is a malevolent figure who rises to power in a post-apocalyptic world, embodying many characteristics associated with the Antichrist, such as deception, charisma, and a profound opposition to all that is good. King's portrayal of Flag taps into the archetypal fear of an ultimate evil figure who seeks to dominate and corrupt. In the realm of film, the Antichrist has been a central theme in many horror and thriller movies. One of the most iconic films is The Omen, 1976, which tells the story of a young boy, Damien, who is revealed to be the Antichrist. The film delves into the biblical prophecies and the signs associated with the rise of the Antichrist, creating a chilling narrative that has captivated audiences for decades. The imagery and themes of the omen draw heavily from the book of Revelation and other apocalyptic texts, reinforcing the cultural resonance of the Antichrist figure. The Exorcist, 1973, also touches upon similar themes, albeit focusing more on demonic possession. However, the underlying fear of a powerful, malevolent force influencing the world is a common thread. The film's portrayal of supernatural evil and the battle against it reflects the broader cultural anxiety about the Antichrist and the end times. Music, too, has not been immune to the influence of the Antichrist narrative. Various artists and bands have explored apocalyptic themes and the concept of ultimate evil in their lyrics and imagery. Heavy metal and rock music, in particular, often delve into these dark and provocative themes. For example, the band Iron Maiden has songs like The Number of the Beast, which references Revelation chapter 13 verse 18 and the infamous number 666 associated with the Antichrist. The song and its album have sparked both fascination and controversy, illustrating the powerful impact of these biblical themes on popular culture. In addition to these direct references, the influence of the Antichrist can be seen in more subtle and symbolic ways across various genres. Science fiction and fantasy often explore themes of a dystopian future, where a singular, malevolent figure or regime exerts oppressive control over society. 
These narratives echo the biblical descriptions of the Antichrist's reign, where deception and tyranny prevail. The impact of the Antichrist narrative extends beyond entertainment into broader cultural and political discourses. Throughout history, various political leaders and figures have been labeled as the Antichrist by their opponents. This labeling is often based on perceived traits such as authoritarianism, deceit, and opposition to traditional moral values. For instance, during the Reformation, both Martin Luther and the Catholic Church accused each other of being the Antichrist, reflecting the intense religious and political conflicts of the time. In contemporary times, this rhetoric persists, with various leaders being likened to the Antichrist in public discourse. This usage underscores the enduring power of the Antichrist archetype as a symbol of ultimate evil and corruption. It also reflects the deep-seated fears and anxieties that such figures can evoke within society. Moreover, the influence of the Antichrist extends into the realm of conspiracy theories. Various conspiracies, often grounded in apocalyptic and eschatological beliefs, portray the Antichrist as a real and imminent threat. These theories frequently involve elaborate narratives about global elites, secret societies, and sinister plots to usher in a new world order. Such beliefs can have significant social and political ramifications, influencing public perception and behavior. The enduring presence of the Antichrist in popular culture highlights several key aspects of human psychology and society. First, it speaks to the universal fear of evil and the unknown. The Antichrist, as a figure of ultimate malevolence, embodies these fears in a tangible and relatable way. This fear is not only about external threats, but also about the potential for evil within humanity itself. Second, the Antichrist narrative underscores the enduring fascination with eschatology in the end times. The idea of a final, cataclysmic struggle between good and evil is a powerful and compelling story that resonates across cultures and epochs. It taps into deep-seated beliefs about justice, redemption, and the ultimate fate of the world. Third, the depiction of the Antichrist in popular culture often serves as a critique of contemporary societal and political issues. By portraying a figure who embodies deceit, corruption, and tyranny, these narratives reflect and amplify concerns about real-world leaders and institutions. They provide a means of exploring and questioning authority, morality, and the direction of society. In conclusion, the figure of the Antichrist has had a profound and multifaceted impact on popular culture. Through literature, film, music, and broader cultural discourses, the Antichrist narrative explores themes of deception, power, and the struggle between good and evil. It reflects deep-seated fears, anxieties, and hopes, resonating with audiences across different contexts and epochs. This enduring presence underscores the powerful role of biblical themes in shaping cultural narratives and the ongoing relevance of the Antichrist as a symbol of ultimate malevolence and cosmic conflict. By staying vigilant, informed, and committed to truth and righteousness, we can navigate the complexities of these prophecies with wisdom and grace. Thank you for watching our video. If you found this discussion insightful, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more enlightening content. God bless us all.